Many people ask me about Pakistan. Do you like Pakistan? I always say Pakistan Zendabad. I ask him, is Pakistan a poor country or a rich country? They said poor. Yani, what are you asking about? Is of course is poor country. Okay. I said, I don't think so, that Pakistan is a poor country. You should work to build your country. And you should feel that when you build your country, you are not building your country for yourself or for the future generation. You should have a aqidah that you are building your country for the entire Muslim ummah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. How are you brothers? Oh, ma sha Allah, very active. Normally when we say how are you, people respond in a very low voice. Now this is very inspiring. Ma sha Allah. First of all, before you know, they you might think that I am specialized in what is the animal welfare or something. That's why I'm talking about the hoodhood. By the way, hoodhood in English is what? Hupu. Okay. In Urdu, hoodhood. And they told me that in, in some areas in Pakistan, you have a lot of hoodhood. Ah, subhanAllah. Okay. The topic that I would like uh, to mention related to the hoodhood, it is actually, the hoodhood reminds you of the other uh, similar story mentioned in the same surah, just a few verses before that, is what? The story of the ant. Yeah? Okay? And there are some similarities between both stories, the ant and the hoodhood. But because if you say the ant, people will not be attractive to listen to you. Okay? But when you say the hoodhood, then this will be attractive. Maybe. Okay. See. My dear brothers, as I understood that many of you, some of you are working, some of you are studying, some of you are doing different jobs. And here you are, mashallah, studying the Quran for one year. May Allah Jalla Ala bless this place and bless the people in charge of this place and bless you with the barakah of the Quran. The Quran is barakah, full of barakah from all angles. See, many people ask me about Pakistan. Do you like Pakistan? I always say Pakistan Zendabad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they tell me, really, do, do you like it? I said, the more time I spend in Pakistan, I like it more. Just when we were coming uh, through the mountains, we came by car. And I was reflecting how Pakistan is a poor country. Yeah. And uh, three, four weeks, four days ago, five days ago, I had a lecture with uh, young girls from the age of 10 to, uh, to maybe 16 in one of the schools. And I told them, I asked them, is Pakistan a poor country or a rich country? They said, poor. Yani, what are you asking about? Is of course, it's a poor country. Okay. I said, I don't think so, that Pakistan is a poor country. You have resources. You have the manpower. Yeah. You have the land, even the land. You have fertile land. You have the desert. You have mountains. Yeah. You have high mountains. Even water. I know you are struggling regarding water, but actually, if it was, uh, if the resource of water was managed properly, I don't think that you have any a problem of water. Just a few months ago, you had the floods. If the water of the floods was controlled and managed properly, you wouldn't have that problem. Okay? You have gas in Pluchistan, yeah, among the biggest gas resources. Maybe you have a problem in terms of petrol, okay, but you have gas. So you have everything. And uh, I know from before, I was born, as the brother said, in Saudi Arabia, and I lived in Saudi Arabia. I used to mix with Pakistanis a lot. I used to, yani, the idea that I uh, formulate about Pakistanis, first of all, don't mess around with them. <laughs> yeah? They are tough people. 
And when I went to university, I mixed more with the Pakistani people, and they are very clever, especially the young people. The more I mix with the young people like yourselves, I see them very clever, very sharp. So you have a lot of potential, but what is wrong? There is something wrong. From my point of view, the Muslim Ummah is suffering from different diseases. All nations are suffering from different diseases. But one of the key problems of the Muslim Ummah, whether it is in Pakistan or elsewhere, is poor management. Are you following that? What is it? What did I say? Poor management. Poor management. Do you agree with me or not? Yes. Yeah? And see, there is no organization that fails because of lack of resources. But any organization, if, even if they have the biggest amount of resources under their disposal, they can fail because of what? Do you agree with me or not? Okay, and I always quote this example. Uh, you know Holland, yeah? Holland colonized Indonesia, one of the biggest Muslim countries in terms of population and in terms of landscape if you consider the sea. Yeah, it has how many islands? Maybe more than 3,000 islands. Holland, how big is Holland? Yeah, Holland is maybe just like, uh, maybe, small, like uh, Islamabad and uh, maybe uh, Faisalabad and just small area. Okay, Holland. And what is the population of Holland, even at that time during the colonization, maybe around 10 million people. Lahore is more than 10 million people. Yeah, what was the population of Indonesia? Yeah, let us say at least more than 100 million people or even 150 million people. Holland managed to colonize Malaysia for how long? Anyone knows? Yeah, Holland managed to colonize, I said Malaysia, no, Indonesia. For how long? Anyone knows? For Oh, almost 350 years. Now tell me how on earth, how on earth 10 million people will be able to control over 100 million people for 350 years? How? Are they more clever? More powerful? Even if the Indonesian were to come together and we have yani, a very bad example, okay, but I don't know. Yani, they said even if they come together and spit on the Dutch people, they might yani, create a, a wave and they might just kick them out. But they managed to control them for or around 350 million people. One of our key problems is what? Management. Okay. See, we agree that we have four schools of thoughts. Fiqh. We agree that we have some differences in some issues related to minor issues of Aqeedah. But that has been the case of the Muslim Ummah since maybe the, the, the second or third Hijra century. And the Muslim Ummah managed to build the greatest civilization known to mankind in terms of a quantity in terms of equality yeah in terms of quantity if you calculate just because of time it managed to be one of the main superpowers of the world for over 1200 years what is the hijra date today what is the Hijra date today? Hijra, Hijra date. Taif, the year, first of all, the year is what? Alf Arbaamiya Okay, 1444. And what is the, the month? Shaaban. And what is the date? First. Okay. 
So, for 1440, for, since the time of the Prophet ﷺ, yeah, over 1400 years, the Muslim Ummah was one of the main superpowers, if not the main superpower, for more than 1200 years. Yeah? So, what happened to our Ummah that our Ummah is in this terrible situation now? Yeah? Of course, we left our Islam, we left. Yeah? But my point, my focus point, is that we have our disagreements from before, the ideological uh, disagreements, fiqh disagreements, etc. We managed those disagreements. In fact, we used those disagreements to enrich our ability to build the greatest civilization to humanity, known to humanity. Okay, let me put it again. We used these agreements, we managed these agreements in a way that empowers us to build the greatest civilization known to mankind. Yes, your brothers? So it is our responsibility now to manage our disagreements in order to rebuild our Ummah to become one of the greatest civilizations as Allah Jalla wa wants us to be. Does Allah Jalla wa want us to be one of the greatest nations? If not the greatest, you are the people of the Quran. Tell me one verse in the Quran that reflects that. Excellent. كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. You are the best nation ever raised to mankind in joining the good, the good and forbidding the evil. Yes, your brothers. I feel that, especially you, Pakistanis. Yeah, you should work to build your country, and you should feel that when you build your country, you are not building your country for yourself or for the future generation, you should have a aqeedah that you are building your country for the entire Muslim Ummah. Because your country is one of the great countries, the great Muslim countries. Are you following, brothers? Yeah? Once you are inspired by that, then you will have a different mindset. You will not accept to be just any individual. Yeah? You will be an individual who is effective and trying to be influential as much as you can in all fields. And the Quran is the Quran is a book of empowerment to transform individuals from passive individuals to proactive individuals. I'm not going to speak about management, but I'm speaking, I'm going to speak about one important quality that we as Muslims need it, okay? Which is the quality of the hoodhood and the ant, which is to be proactive people. Are you following that? To be what? Proactive people. Suleiman, when he was passing, he passed by a uh, uh, a town, yeah, and uh, a town of uh, uh, an aunt, aunt's town, yeah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu or sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, he was about to step over the, yeah, the houses of those aunts. Why Allah jalla wa ala mentioned, my dear brothers, that, yeah, فلما أتوا على واد النمل قانت نملة يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم لا يحتمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون فتبسم ضاحكا من قولها Why? What is the significance of this story and aunt? Yeah? Uh, you can say that سبحان الله the Quran and the Sunnah they are using the uh, what we can say, but be careful in using this statement, the dramatization of the incident. 
So Sulaiman with his army passed by or over the village of the ants. And then all of a sudden, one of the ants said, oh, 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 ants, quickly, 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 get into your homes. Otherwise, Sulaiman and his army will step over your bodies to crush them. Yeah, is that tr is like... This is a, a drama in front of us, but a true drama. What is the point of this? Why Allah Jalla Ala mentioned that? So the ant uh, about the whole So the ant felt the responsibility. Yeah? Allah Jalla Ala wouldn't mention the story just for nothing. And then not only felt the responsibility and they started to cry and weep. No. What did it do? Took a proactive what? A step. So instead of crying and shouting and cursing the darkness, as we say in Arabic, you have to go and what? Do something to remove the darkness or light a candle. So this is ant. Then we have the story of the hudhud وتفقد الطير فقال ما لي لا أرى الهدهدة where is the hudhud where is this bird the hippo أم كان من الغائبين لا أعذبنه عذابا شديدا which means that the hudhud did not take the permission of Sulaiman yes or no yeah سبحان الله the Quran teaches us to be yeah, people who are proactive people and not to be submissive all the time. Because submissiveness is not good all the time. Are you following that? Yeah? Even they say in management, we have to have some control chaos. And especially when you develop people to become leaders yeah you are not going to teach them to be submissive people so the hood hood this bird he went against the rule of law of the prophet Suleiman and he was what he was a bird yeah but he felt that it is what there is a need for it are you following this or not? Yeah? Suleiman became even angry. Then the hudhud came to justify what he did. What? He came from Saba. Yes, brothers or not? The story of Saba. Have you covered the story of Saba or not? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, he came from Ataytuka bin Aba'in min Saba'in min Makanin Ba'in. He came from Saba, Saba, Sheba. Where is Sheba? In Yemen. Oh, no. He traveled all the way to Saba. They said Suleiman was in Al Quds. According to one narration. <coughs> yes? Okay. Subhanallah, he traveled all the way to Yemen. Amazing. To what? To do something. Even the bird is a proactive individual. Are you following? Life without activities. Passive life is a boring life. Passive life is the life of the slaves. Because they are fed up with their slavery. They don't want to do something. They have to be beaten up until they do something. But the life of the leaders is full of activities. Not necessarily that they will be successful each time. But what? 
they are active all the time. That's why among the names that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to love is what? Hammam. Yeah? Thinking of, yeah, what, what is next? What is next? Let me do something else. Yes? And what was the message of Hudhud? He was shocked. That I came from those people, Allah Jalla Allah gave them a lot of khayrat, and then they worship the sun. Well, they should have been worshiping Allah Jalla Allah. And that move from the hood hood caused what? Caused the, that the whole nation of Sheba, of Saba, to accept Islam. Yes or no? Yes. Because the queen, then the king, he said, who can write, you know the story, who can write, who can bring her uh, throne, yeah, so one from the jinn and then one from the yani, uh, Muslim jinn, he said, I'll get it for you, then he brought it and then she came and then, okay, and then, قالت أسلمت لسليمان لله رب قال أسلمت مع سليمان لله رب العالمين. I believed مع سليمان for Allah. Okay. And definitely she is the queen. Most of her people will accept Islam because of that. Okay. Of course the story is full of lessons. But my point is, yeah, brothers, you, most of you or all of you, mashallah, are young. Believe me, life without activism, life without activism is a boring life. Is worthless and you are the people of the Quran you should be the movers and the shakers of the entire world let alone your country if the people of the Quran they are not the movers and the shakers of their country then we leave the country for who for the people who do not believe in the Quran for the people who do not follow the Quran to run their country Yes, you should feel the responsibility. You are coming to study the Quran, and then what? No, the Quran, subhanallah, the Quran is a book of activism. The Quran empowers individuals and empowers the ummah to do something. That's why Allah Jalla Ala says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. The condition before even Allah Jalla Ala mentioned Iman is what? You are the movers and the shakers of the entire world. This is my message to you. Okay, my dear brothers, may Allah Jalla Ala accept it from you. And may Allah Jalla Ala make the people of the Quran who are what? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ahlul Quran are what? Huh? They are the people of Allah, the private people of Allah, the closest people to Allah. Yeah? So the closest people to Allah should not remain passive, but should try to share the light of the Quran. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati. They should. And Allah Jalla Ala also says, Ya ayyuhan nasu qad jaakum burhanum min rabbikum wa anzalna ilaykum nura alif lam ra kitabun anzalnahu ilayka li tukhrij al nasa min al dhulumati ila al nur. Who is going to do this job? You, brothers. Say inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakumullahu khairan.